Finally, time to solve equations. We have rational exponents and we have to solve for x. x to the 3 halves equals 8. Hmm, I want to solve for x, meaning x to the first power. Well, how can I get a fraction to equal 1? Multiply by the reciprocal. So all I need to do is raise it to the reciprocal close by multiply. So x to the 3 halves, I'm going to raise it to the 2 thirds. And of course, it's an equation. So whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So that means I have to raise 8 to the 2 thirds power as well. Now really think through why this is going to work. x raised to the 3 halves raised to the 2 thirds. 3 halves times 2 thirds. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So that's the whole idea. That's how I got rid of my rational exponent. I raised it to the reciprocal. So now I have x to the first power, or just x, equals 8 to the 2 thirds. 8 to the 2 thirds? We know it's easier to go radical in this case. So 8, cube root of 8, and then quantity squared. I'm going to go ahead and cube root first, because that's easier. Cube root of 8 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. Boom. That's not so bad, is it? How about you solve the next one? So of course, we always isolate. Get that x to the 1 half by itself, then raise it to the reciprocal. How do I get rid of a 1 half power? We'll just square it, right? Raise it to the 2 over 1, and x equals 25. Number 3, let's go ahead and isolate. So I'll divide the 3 out from both sides. Now x plus 1 is in parentheses raised to the 2 thirds power. I need to get rid of the 2 thirds power, make it just to the first power. So I'll raise it to the reciprocal, so raise it to the 3 halves, and whatever I do to the left, I do to the right. Okay, this gets a little tricky now because in rational exponent form, I have 3 halves, but think about what I'm really doing. I'm taking the square root and then cubing it. What happens when I square root both sides of an equation? I get two possibilities, plus minus. Pause and think about that for a second. Think back to when we were just solving equations like x squared equals nine. We'd square root both sides, x could be positive or negative three. So as soon as I raise that to the three halves power, the thing I did, right, in brown, three halves square root, I need a plus minus. Square root of four is two, and then two cubed is eight. So I end up with this plus minus eight on that, that other side over there. So now we want to separate this because we have to solve it as two separate equations. So this is a good time for Miss Ryan's little curtain. We're going to do x plus one equals negative eight, x plus one equals positive eight. Let's not skip any steps and miss the problem. It's worth just writing it out and getting it correct. Finish it up. Number four is similar, but I really want you to try this because this is the part that it's tricky. I get going too fast and I can forget it. So please do something to make yourselves remember this. So number four, try it and then come back and check with my answer. Bien. Did you get x equals negative 30 and x equals 24? Boom. All right. I was about to cut you loose and then I looked and I'm like, oops, you might need me here. Okay. We have x on both sides and there's no way to get those x's together. So this is really a little bit counterintuitive and takes practice. I'm actually going to add the 5 and move it over to the other x. Then the x plus 7 is in parentheses to the 1 half power. You'll see why I do that. Whew. Okay, I need to get rid of that one half power. So I'm gonna raise it to the reciprocal. Reciprocal of one half is two over one, so two. So I'm gonna square both sides. Okay, don't go breaking my heart here. When you square both sides, you better get the right hand side correct. Were you taking a shortcut? Better not. If I see x squared plus 25, ugh, dagger to the heart. I 
am so excited. We have a quadratic, so we're gonna set everything equal to zero and then factor it and see if we can solve this. Using zero product property, I get x equals negative six, x equals negative three. Now, oh, there's a problem here. When we squared both sides and we created this quadratic, we created a situation where we might get a false solution. So it's a solution to the problem that we created, but it's not necessarily a solution to the original problem. So we need to go all the way back to the original problem and test both solutions. Hint, hint, they're not both gonna work. So I plug in negative three to the original equation. I get four to the one half power. Well, that's just square root of four, which is two. Two minus five, yep, it equals negative three. Let's test negative six. I know I told you one of them's not gonna work, but let's make sure I didn't make a mistake. Square root of one is one, minus five would be negative four. Negative four does not equal negative six. <clears throat> That is not the correct answer. So let's make sure and clearly mark out x cannot equal negative six. Say that it is extraneous. Let's write that out. And make sure that when you're communicating to us, you show us both answers, but then clearly mark which one is extraneous and leave the one that is the correct answer. Well, I'm glad Mrs. Spirit took care of those rational exponents because now all I have left are radicals. As we look at six, we got the square root of x minus one equals x minus seven. Our first job is to isolate the square root and that's done. So now I just need to undo a square root. How do I do that? I square it. Whatever I do to one side, I gotta do to the other. So x minus seven's also getting squared. If I square a square root, I get x minus one equals, okay, x minus seven squared is x minus seven times x minus seven. So we have to expand that. Go ahead and finish that, see what happens. check it out. Did you check for extraneous? That x equals 5 definitely didn't work when I plugged it back into the original problem. So x equals 5 is extraneous, x equals 10 is my solution. Now looking at this next one, I have two different square roots. So I'm going to make sure I isolate them on each side of my equation so that way I can square them to undo them. So to do that, I added that two root x to the other side. So now I have a radical on each side and I can square the whole thing. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm gonna end up with three x plus two because the square undoes the square root equals, okay, I got a two outside the square root that's also being squared. So that's gonna be four square root x squared is x. Whew. All right, now x is to one side and solve. Wow, I just got x equals two, no worries. All right, this last one, I totally think you got this. I have x minus four equals square root of two x already isolated, go for it. I got x equals eight, x equals two. When I checked my solution, x equals two was extraneous. So just x equals eight. 